A2AD is an all-domain concept for defense and deterrence. The only component of that concept that is almost exclusively the concern of land component commanders is ballistic missile and long-range precision fires. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I am your host, and this is 35 Fox Talks. In our last video on the principles of A2AD, we outlined some of the components of A2AD. When networked together, these components allow the strategists of great powers to form A2AD strategies, an A2AD system of systems. We also briefly discussed how conducting target system analysis on a nation's A2AD is a monumental task that is easier to accomplish when each component's target system analysis is networked together, like A2AD is networked together. Before discussing weapon systems, we want to thank the Tradoc G2 Operational Environment Team, with a special thanks to the Gaming and Visualization Crew. Their hard work on the 3D models and the Odin Portal made this video possible. Please visit the link in the description to access the 3D model web viewer. Also remember that the Odin portal has the complete laydown of the date scenario, Op 4 structure, tactics, and the worldwide equipment guide. And now, back to the show. For national strategic anti-access ballistic missiles, the Denovians have the RS-24 Yars Nuclear Arm Mobile Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, aka Topol M, aka RT2, aka SS-25 or SS-27 based on upgrades. With an 11,000 km or 6,800 mile range, the missile can hit almost any target on the globe in minutes. The system consists of a MZKT-79221 Universal 16-wheel Transport Erector Launcher TEL, and RS-12 M1 Topol M missile. The system is designed to leave garrisons within minutes of notification and operate from remote hide sites across Denovia. Thanks to pre-programmed targets and onboard computerized launch systems, the RS-24 can fire on its target from any location in Denovia to include non-pre-planned launch areas with high accuracy. The RS-12 M1 missile can be erected and launched within minutes to reduce risk of detection and interdiction. Once in flight, the missile warhead is reported to be encapsulated within a maneuverable airframe so that it can evade missile defense systems such as the U.S. Army's Terminal High Altitude Area Defense (THAAD) systems. The warhead is also reported to have onboard counter-detection capabilities and decoys to further increase the chances of evading interception. While Denovia has a no-first-use policy for nuclear weapons, the RS-24's mobility, quick-firing sequence, and missile defense evasion capability make it a key anti-access platform. This is because the system's existence forces potential enemies to think twice about where and how they will employ their militaries so as not to create a mutually assured destruction event. For historic examples, see the Cuban Missile Crisis. Down a notch from nuclear doomsday and deterrence, Denovia possesses two ballistic missile systems that have overlapping roles as anti-access and area denial weapons. The first is the Shahab-2 and Shahab-3 system. This system is based on the older SS-1 Scud short and medium range ballistic missile family. These are battlefield support weapons designed to strike at targets such as marshalling areas, major storage dumps, and airfields behind enemy lines. Warheads can be nuclear, chemical, or a number of different conventional high explosive variants. The Shahab missile family can be mounted on any number of different TELs. It is a liquid-fueled rocket, which means it needs to be filled with fuel as close to its launch window as possible, or else the liquid will degrade and hurt missile range and performance, or even cause a failed launch. When fueled, the missile weighs about 6,095 kilograms or 13,437 pounds, and has a range of approximately 500 kilometers or 310 miles. A critical issue with the Shahab-2 is its poor accuracy. Guided by World War II-style inertial guidance systems, the missile is believed to have a circular error probable of 1,500 meters. What is a circular error probable, or CEP you ask? It is an area in which 99% of missiles shot will land from their aim point. So if we say a Shahab-2's aim point is an allied base, 
A CEP of 1,500 meters means 99% of Shahab's shot at the base will land somewhere within a 1,500 meter radius of the base. Which is terrible for precision fires, like, not precise at all. But it's okay for something like a large airport or a huge ammo depot. Within this 1,500 meter radius, 50% of Shahab 2s will randomly land up to 495 meters from the aim point. An additional 43.7% of missiles shot will land somewhere in a band of 495 to 990 meters from the aim point, and an additional 6.1% of Shahab 2 shot will land in a band 990 to 1500 meters from the aim point. Denovia is known to be upgrading their Shahab 2s to Shahab 3A and B variants, which extends the range from 500 kilometers to 1300 kilometers, or about 808 miles, and reduces that abysmal 1500 CEP to 140 meters and 50 meters respectively for the 3A and 3B. Regarding destruction, the Shahab 2 and 3B can carry 770 kilograms or just short of 1700 pounds of explosives, while the 3A can carry 1400 kilograms or just over 3000 pounds of explosives. Warhead types include unitary, 5 280 kilogram or 617 pound independent dispersing warheads, submunitions, fuel air mixture warhead, chemical, and nuclear. The time it takes to emplace and launch a mobile Shahab 2 or 3 comes down to crew proficiency and adaptability. For example, some militaries with poor training and rigid command structures take up to 90 minutes to execute all preparation and launch procedures. Meanwhile, more competent militaries, like Denovia's, take less than 30 minutes to execute the same preparation and launch procedures. Displacing after firing takes less time, usually in the 15 minutes or less time frame. Now before moving on, we need to circle back to the different warhead types each of these systems can employ. Based on the desired effect against targets, every rocket or missile can have swappable, customizable warheads. Unitary warheads are the most basic. Fill the warhead with as much high explosive as possible and launch a big bomb at the enemy. Hardened Target Penetrator, aka Bunker Buster Warheads. These warheads mix time-delayed fuses with dense penetrating armor to go through bunkers and such before exploding their unitary or fuel-air mixture warhead. Fuel-air mixture warheads are filled with stable chemical compounds. Stable, that is, until the warhead is broken open by a small charge above an enemy or by slamming into a target. Then the chemicals mix together and ignite in the presence of oxygen thus creating an intense fireball that burns everything and removes all oxygen from a given space. Independent dispersing warheads are small, unitary warheads banded together within the missile body. At a certain altitude, the missile breaks apart and each unitary warhead is guided to a different target. Submunition, aka cluster bomb, aka dual purpose improved conventional munition. This is basically packing a missile warhead with a bunch of grenades. Again, at a pre-designated altitude, the missile breaks open, allowing dozens or hundreds of bomblets to disperse across a wide area. The term DPICM, or Dual Purpose Improved Conventional Munitions, is often used to describe these types of warheads because each bomblet is typically a small, shaped charge grenade that can both penetrate the roof of an armored vehicle and dispense shrapnel to harm dismounted combatants. Mine dispersing. It's really simple, honestly. Break open at a certain altitude, Dispense mines across the ground to impede the movement of infantry and or armored vehicles. Electromagnetic Pulse, or EMP. This warhead generates a magnetic field that wipes out all electronic devices within a given area by overloading them with so much energy they basically short circuit. You know, fry. Alright, back to missile platforms. This one is truly Denovia's first real ground-based precision fires platform. It is also a platform that is arguably barely an anti-access platform at all, and might just be an area denial platform. It is the 9 Kilo 720 Iskander aka SS-26 Stone Short Range Ballistic Missile System. The Iskander is capable of carrying two different missile types. The 9 Mike 723 Kilo 1 is your standard ballistic missile, and the 9 Mike 729 aka SSC-8, is a multi-role long-range cruise missile. The 9 Mike 723 Kilo-1 ballistic missile has a range of 20 to 500 kilometers. That's right, anything closer than 20 kilometers can't be shot at by the Iskander. The CEP of the missile is 5 to 7 meters or 16 and a half to 23 feet, 
which may seem large, but when you consider this missile has a blast radius that exceeds 100 feet, it's pretty good. Also remember that a CEP of 7 meters actually means half of all rounds will land roughly 2 and a third or 7 and a half feet from the aim point. The accuracy of the ballistic missile is due to the dual inertial and GPS guidance systems. The ballistic missile can also have a digital scene matching area correlator guidance system. This allows the missile to have high accuracy when GPS guidance is lost because the onboard computer collects data on terrain below the warhead and matches it to stored targeting data. The missile can be armed with all the warhead variants previously mentioned to deal with just about any target. The twist with this ballistic missile warhead is that it can reportedly reach speeds of Mach 5.9 as it descends on its target. That means the warhead is a hypersonic warhead, allowing it to conduct at least one in-flight maneuver at up to 30 Gs to evade anti-ballistic missile interceptors. When paired with onboard radar jammers, the 9 Mike 723 Kilo-1 ballistic missile theoretically has a low chance of being intercepted by most ballistic missile defense systems employed by the world's militaries. Meanwhile, the 9 Mike 729 aka SSC-8 multi-role long-range cruise missile is capable of delivering 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds of payload that includes high explosive, cluster munitions, fuel air explosive, and bunker buster warheads. With GPS guidance, the cruise missile can reportedly strike targets 480 kilometers away from the launch point with a CEP of less than 5 meters or 16 and a half feet. While the current SSC-8 inventory has these ranges and accuracy limitations, efforts are being made to extend the range to 2,500 kilometers and reduce the CEP to under 1 meter. Well, Fusionistas, that's all the time we'll take from you today. In our next episode, we continue with Denovian Ballistic Missile and Long Range Precision Fires, Area Denial Platforms. Until then, take care, and God bless.